Hey guys, it's Alexei from Ace5 Studios and I'm talking about the shader effect of today. Um, I had a previous tutorial which you can t have a look at, uh, blocked terrains, which kind of touched on this, but I decided to do a more in-depth tutorial or quick tip, I guess, on the shader effector. So let's get started. Cinema 4D uses gradients and color in a lot of places. So let's begin with just delete these materials. In this material, if we put in a gradient here and apply it to the plane, you will see it goes from black to white. Great, right? So let's make a cloner and let's make a cube inside the cloner, make the cube very small, and change the cloner to object, oops, object, and drag the plane here and change this to polygon center. Obviously we need more divisions here, so let's make this 20 and 20. There you go, make sure your plane is above your cloner, otherwise it won't update in time. Let's make the cubes a bit smaller, let's give the cube a color. Let's make it something purplish. And you can't see it. To change in the cloner, then there you go, and let's make them smaller so we can see what's happening underneath them. So as you can see, every every polygon has a cube in it, and now we're going to use a shader effector to affect the cube's parameters. So click the cloner, make a shader effector, and in the shader effector, you got to pick the shading. So we got to pick the color channel, and we're gonna drag this material tag in here. And now you can see the shader effect is actually affecting the color of the cubes, which is great, but not really what I'm on about. So let's turn this color mode off, because I'm not talking about the color of the cubes. I am talking about moving them with the shader effector and scaling them. As you can see right now, it's applying a scale, which is kind of hard to tell. So let's turn off uniform scale and let's drag this one up. So as you can see, the gradient goes from one side to the other. White means four times the length and black means one time the length. And this is kind of the concept. You can change it to position, and you can move them up, and you can see the line that it makes. And this is based on the gradient. So if you change the color gradient here, you can change it to, I've been over this in the other tutorial, but I just wanted not to miss out. You can change it to linear, and then I move straight. These are basically the two. There's also none, in which case you just have some cubes which go up because there's a straight line. But let's keep this at smooth knots. So why would you want to do this? Well, mostly I prefer it when I want to animate randomness. Let's see what we can do with a random effector. If we just get a random effector and make sure it's in the effect as list here. It moves all the cubes in different places. We don't need these, let's just move them up and down. Let's make it like five. Or let's make it the same as the other one, scale. Let's make the scale four. It randomly scales them. Right now there's very little control. I can go to the effector and I can change the seed, but that's really about it. You can change the random mode to noise. And now if you press play, you have an animation going on, which is nice, but you have very little control. All you can change is the speed of the animation, so you can make it really slow or really fast, and you can change the scale, so you can have it small scale or large scale. That's very little control. Sometimes you want different kind of randomness, and that's where the shader effector comes in. Because in the shader effector, it can take any noise you want. If you click your material, and here we switch to noise, and make sure you switch this from texture to UV space. Now you can see that these boxes are moving up at the, depending on how wide it is underneath. So let's change our parameters to our scale. And you see what's happening now. Now right now it's just gray and white. So let's up the contrast a bit. So we have a bit more black and white, a bit less here. And let's also increase the global scale to like 400. 
Now, as you can see, it doesn't really correspond right now to them. It does, but it's very slow. That's because you want to go to the material settings. Oops, double click on it. Editor and change this to animate preview. And now there's no animation going on. That's why it's not happening. So let's get back to our color and noise and let's turn on the animation. Animation speed 0.3, 0.6. Now when we press play, you'll see that the boxes grow or shrink depending on the color. So here black stuff makes them shrink, you know, makes them go lower down, and the white stuff makes them go bigger. Also, maybe it'll help if our shader effector scales them up a bit here as well. So let's try 0 0.5 and 0.5. So there you go, you have black will shrink them down and white will bring them back to the side. See? So very nifty effect. And here we have a lot more control now because our shader is noise. And we can, for example, pick a different noise. Let's pick something like Pezzo. And as you can see, we have a totally different effect. You can't do this with a random effect here. And this is really the main strength of the shader effector. And you can combine these noises. You can layer noise on top of noise, and you can use textures. And it's just, it's a very, very nifty little thing. And if we go back to our shader effector, we can now you know, also turn on the on color parameter. And now you can see they go white. And what's there? We can change this to, where is it? User defined and we can make it blue. Now we get little blue ones coming up. And this is what the shader effector is all about because it lets you really control things. Um, yeah, and you can obviously transfer this. So if you, for example, have a sphere, make sure it's a standard sphere and let's give it a lot more subdivisions. So, and let's go into cloner and change the object to sphere. I put, whoops, wrong place. Sphere. Okay. Look at that. And now we have the same thing as you can see is happening. But it's still using the texture tag on the plane. So it's looking at the UVs of the plane and remapping them to the UVs of the sphere, which is kind of confusing. So let's just control click and drag this here. And right now it fits, you know, because the UVs are standard, they just unwrap. But it's probably a good idea to go to shading and drag this. Tag in there. Now the next thing you might ask is, well, I don't want to see this material underneath. Well, that's the great thing about this shader tag. You can just make a new material and apply it on top, and it's still going to look at the material underneath. Very handy. And you know what? Let's crank this. Let's crank this up a bit. Let's give it. There you go. Let's bring it a bit further. I think. How nifty is that? Nice, right? And you remember, you have full control over the noise. If it scales too big, let's make it smaller. We have more of them coming out. Or we can make it bigger, like 800 little lumps coming out everywhere. And you can make the animation speed faster. And if you want, you can even scale the relative scale. So let's change this to like 200. Nope, it's not the right one. There you go, now everything's stretched. You can see the noise is stretched. Animate. You can see how the noise behaves. Things to 100. There you go, have a nice little. And you just have so much control of the types of noise you can bring into this, you know, it's like huge. So, yeah, that's the reason why you should use this. And obviously, you can pick any channel you want. So, if this is in your bump map, you know, you can put it into the bump or the fog or reflectance, whatever you want. And then you can just pick the shader effect and you can pick which channel it should sample. So you can combine it with alpha maps, all kinds of nifty stuff. So there you go, have, have fun with this. Um, it's Alexei from Ace 5 Studios. If you like this, go to my website, check out more tutorials. I'm trying to put them up regularly now. If you have any questions, post in the comments. See you next time.